Um, but um, I was invited along uh, to do this little presentation and talk about uh, using social media in radio. And as you can see, uh, I'm a real dab hand at PowerPoint uh, as well. It's all singing, all dancing. Uh, it's all shiny. Look at that. That's uh, take me hours uh, to, to work on that. I'm sure you'll, sure you'll agree. Um, but, but social media is something that I've just you know, got into uh, over the years. It's become a, an essential tool uh, working in radio in this day and age. Um, commercial radio specifically, I've worked in it for coming up for 25 years now, and it has changed completely from top to bottom. And uh, we've all had to go with the changes or, or step to the side. And uh, part of that is a lot of the commercial radio stations run shows which are very tightly formatted, which means we're effectively told uh, to get as much music away as we possibly can, chat as little as we possibly can, but in that time you do get to chat, engage as much as you can with the listener and move on and play the next song. Um, so where I have found social media has been a great outlet uh, for me to engage with the audience. Uh, I'm on Monday through to Friday between 10 and 2 in the afternoon. So 10 in the morning, we have our top 10 at 10, as I do through, through Clyde and West Sound. And, uh, and then the rest of the three hours, it's, it's pretty much a normal sort of playlist music. And I've just got to pepper that with my own personality as much as I can. Um, so before there was social media and radio, when I started in 1990, uh, our listeners would engage with the radio stations this old-fashioned way with a, a pen and a piece of paper and they would they would write to us uh, they would also sometimes phone us if we were very lucky and if they were very flash listeners they would use uh, one of these uh, or indeed I remember how the excitement at fourth when we got a fax machine um, brought into the studio and uh, we actually found out we couldn't have it in the studio because when a fax did come through it was too noisy so we had to stick it in the corridor so we couldn't actually say oh there's a fax coming through we'd have to wait till there was a record on runner to get the so you get the idea. It was never the slickest uh, of operations interacting uh, with, our, uh, with our audience. But now that's changed. We have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and find many, many other platforms out there as well. But these are the main ones, certainly, that I engage with uh, on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. And whereas before... If I was thinking about my show the next day, I would start thinking about it the night before or the morning, and I would maybe look at the newspapers or wait for the papers to come out in the morning. But these would be the same papers that the breakfast guys would be reading, so they would often get a lot of the hot topics away. You'd maybe look at magazines, or more recently, you would just access the internet before the, all these social media platforms came on. Uh, whereas now, uh, and I'll give you a little tiny example. I was on Facebook one night, and there was a, a clip that was put on YouTube uh, of a woman who had the giggles on a bus. Uh, which was on a Saturday night, and, and uh, she was just sitting there absolutely pissing her pants, and we didn't know why. Right? Somebody just stuck a camera on her, and she was absolutely just ending herself on the bus. So I decided to do a little bit of digging on this one, so I put it around my Facebook page. Anyone who this is, she's obviously Edinburgh, uh, she's on a Lothian bus, uh, who is it? And then I started getting this name coming through, her name's Linda Kane. So I did a search on Facebook, found Alinda Kane, and uh, I applied to be her friend, and she accepted. And I said, is this you that's laughing on the bus? So within a few minutes of detective work on social media, uh, because I knew by the time it got to the, day, the next day's radio, everybody would be talking about it. It was sort of building and building and building. So not only did I get to know her name, I got her on my show, and she told me why she was laughing. And she said, I wasn't just on my own. Um, I was there with a few friends. We'd been uptown on a Saturday afternoon, had a few glasses of wine. Somebody said something, and I chuckled all the way back. Now, that was a wonderful bit of local uh, content, which we used, and it gave me about an hour and a half's worth of playtime uh, on the radio. So half my work was done before it even turned up. Humor is key. When I socially uh, engage with, with the listeners, I can do it when I'm on air and when I'm off air. And this is kind of what I've just sort of squeezed into the presentation I'm going to do and how I use my sense of humor because I've got to assume that the listeners who tune in to listen to me get my sense of humor, like my sense of humor, and that's why they, they, they come back. So I try and be as topical as possible for, for reasons I've just mentioned there. Get on as quickly as you possibly can and react to it as quickly as you can because it burns. Social media burns very quickly and if you're not there first and foremost and ahead of it before anybody else then you're a day. It's a bit like getting the football results uh, on a Sunday afternoon saying, oh look at that, Hibs won yesterday. Like we know that. Um, that's a rare thing and a very bizarre example to give you but you get the idea. You need to be on it when it happens. So this was me, an example of this. Thea who's sitting down the front here, tweeted this earlier on today. Beautiful fun day to head to Kilmarnock for some fun at day two of working digital. Looking forward to Grant and Martin from Iron Brew. And I went, oh, Iron Brew. Now, I remember the aforementioned fanny magnet. 
You know, Iron Brew sent me a fanny magnet as part of this massive campaign and this forward thinking that they thought about. So I picked up this little bit of product placement and branding, which I thought was hysterically funny, and um, took a photograph of it in the studio and tweeted it and stuck it on Facebook, and I became the fanny on the radio. Uh, and then that worked for me again. So there, that was the idea. So hashtag the fanny off the radio. Uh, and there was proof because Iron Brew sent me a fanny magnet. And uh, I can vouch they were very popular. Lots of people were trying to get them and trying to get mine. But they don't have it. It's on my fridge. It's not on my white car uh, either. Uh, try to make dull info at least mildly amusing. Um, working on the radio, as, as I do, we often get traffic updates. On Monday, uh, on the bypass in Edinburgh, there was a swan that had been hit by a four before. And it was sat on the inside lane, not moving. Now, we're not sure if it was injured or it was just in the huff, uh, but it wasn't moving. So now, I've been on this for about an hour because it was beginning to back up the traffic. And I'm thinking, right, I'm going to send a, twi a tweet out there, but I thought I'll use a bit of information. Instead of just going, by the way, the swan is still on the inside lane. It's not moving. It's still busy. I got a call. And somebody gave me a wee swan update. So I decided to forward this swan update with the use of Twitter. And this was the tweet. Swan on bypass traffic update from John the Grease Monkey. Apparently it's no giving a fuck. <laughs> and moving for no one. End of traffic update. <laughs> so that essentially, that was me giving my traffic update there. But doing it with a wee bit of smile and a wee bit of humour and obviously giving John the Grease Monkey a wee bit of credit because that's exactly verbatim how he, delivered, he got that information to me and uh, told me about this one. So I used that and it got a nice little round uh, on, on Twitter. Now stuff that makes you laugh will hopefully make your followers laugh as well and this is how I try and, uh, and get their attention. This genuinely is a Scotsman tweet which I retweeted. A television commercial for an energy drink, nay danger, has been banned because of its slogan, Chokin for Bobby. <laughs> now the idea of the Scotsman using the phrase, Chokin for Bobby, in a story, just made me laugh. So I retweeted that, and people weren't taking it seriously, going, hmm, I wonder what that energy drink was. And indeed, were they choking for the booby or not? But it's just, it's just a funny thing. When you see something like the Scotsman talking about the Bobby, uh, and here we are, we've got Bobbies and Fannies all going on in, in one, one wonderful world of, of social interaction today. Uh, another one uh, was from STV Glasgow. I retweeted this, had fun with this. Do you feel unsafe cycling in Glasgow? It's like, well, I was when I was cycling through the Argyle Arcade at lunchtime today. Um, See, that was going to be going through George Square on Friday, but then there was that robbery. Did you hear about the robbery in Argyle Arcade today? Yeah. Apparently they used big mallets on the, win on the windows of the jewellers in Argyle Arcade, which apparently are mallet-proof. Who'd have thought? Um, so that, so that, that's why. So if I see something that makes me laugh, I'm going to use it to hopefully get a few laughs on the social network as well. This is a warning. I have my own Twitter account, which I use just broadly. We also have our own Facebook account, but we we'll also have administrative rights sometimes to the business, to the company that you work for, and it's part of your job to update the Twitter account. Now, this is a wee lesson. You may have seen this already over the last couple of days, I'm not sure, but this is a wee lesson. If you have admin rights to a business account and your own personal account, make sure you're using the right one at the right time. Do you know what's coming? <laughs> We've just had the independence debate. Alistair Darling was on debate with Alex Salmond on the telly, which of course everyone was engaged in, everyone was tweeting about, and then this came out from East Renfrewshire Council. Alistair, shut your puss. <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. Now, I don't know if that was East Renfrewshire Council making their own little political stance. And actually, as it turns out, no, they weren't, because 35 minutes later, uh, apologies, folks, personal views being expressed through Council Twitter and situation now in hand. <laughs> no offence meant. <laughs> All that was missing there was a hashtag Boz being booted. That would have, that would have just finished off perfectly, uh, to be fair. Make use, as we've just heard, the, the, the capacity to use and engage with huge sporting events. Uh, because everyone's going to be engaged with it, especially the ones that, we're, that we've all seen and that, that have been on this year in particular. It's been huge, and uh, it's a chance for you to, to interact with your, with your audience. And this is all away from radio, remember, but I'm still engaging with the guys who hopefully come back to tune in to me between 10 and 2 the next day. If I'm making them laugh on Twitter, they'll hopefully come back to, to hear a bit of my chat on the radio as well. 
Right, for example, the World Cup. We can go back to the World Cup. Everyone's watching the football. We're all tuned into watching the football. And uh, there was one particular game and Honduras were playing. And uh, I was listening to the commentary team and they were saying, uh, Dibucci. Uh, is, and he was getting Dibucci. And uh, Dibucci, is this Dibucci? Is this all over the park, this player Dibucci, playing for Honduras. So I'm thinking about it and thinking about it. I thought, right, everyone's just about there now. Everyone's hearing this. So everyone's watching this. Might get this wee bit of uh, humor from me. I think Honduras' plan is clear. Pass Debucci on the left-hand side. <laughs> I love that, right? Pa so I'm thinking, I've got everyone singing Pass Debucci on the left-hand side as they're going through. Loads of retweets, as you see, 284. Now, I do have to clarify, I know you've heard from the guys from the Commonwealth Games, you've heard from a magnificent, huge brand that is Iron Brew. They're dealing with hundreds of thousands, millions uh, of hits. This is a much more smaller, a much local uh, hit with regards to what I'm doing in, in Edinburgh, the Lothians and Fife is effectively my area to engage. And, and if we get beyond that, then, then fantastic. So, so it's a different kind of capacity. However, you can see with just one tweet, it gets a great hit, and hopefully other people will engage on that as well. Now this one, for example, past Debucci on the left-hand side, was picked up by Irvin Welsh. Irvin retweeted that to 126,000 of his followers. So again, I'm hopefully going to get a wee tickle on, on the back of Mr. Welsh's um, uh, Twitter fan base as well. So it's great if you get people like that to, to, to engage with you too. Uh, and also you can share what other people say. I put this on Facebook after the Brazil game. Fred uh, was uh, defending himself against criticism and insisted the referee was right to award Brazil a penalty against Croatia. And the headline was, penalty was right, said Fred. <laughs> now, I don't know if that was deliberate from the guys at Sky News or not, but I was having a wee bit of that, and uh, so did many of my listeners in the morning. This was just the next day. Cut and paste, stick it on my Facebook page. The listeners love it. Lots of shares, lots of comments, and uh, lots of likes as well, which is great. Uh, it can get you trending. If you're lucky, and if you strike at the right moment, you can trend. And I've been fortunate enough that a couple of things that I've done have got me trending, uh, if you like. And one of the first times was when Andy Murray... I was doing so well at Wimbledon last year. And uh, there's an area in Edinburgh called the Murrays. And uh, in a previous game where Andy Murray was playing, uh, one of the locals from uh, the Murrays in Edinburgh nipped out and decided to create their own little tribute to Andy Murray. So I used this again just when he won Wimbledon. So the photograph there, they just, oh, hang on. Oh, that's gone in the beginning. How did that happen? Um, so the photograph that was used, they'd taken... See, this is my first PowerPoint ever. Um, so the photograph was used of the Murrays, a quick piece of A4 paper, and it was renamed the Andy Murrays. Uh, all of a sudden, this particular part of Edinburgh, and I renamed this as their tribute to, uh, to the Wimbledon champion. And that got me trending. And I got one of these, and I was very excited about that. Look, whoop, Grant Stott is now trending in Edinburgh. Uh, however, uh, at the same time, so was Wank. Uh, trending um, in Edinburgh. <laughs> now, whether the two were uh, co connected, I have absolutely no idea, but it certainly put my uh, power a peep uh, when that came out. A celebrity scoop is a bonus. Um, during the Commonwealth Games, there was a wonderful story that came out, and again, being on the radio during the day, keeping an eye on Twitter, keeping an eye on Facebook, you can see these things and engage with them and talk about them before they get onto the news, before they get on tomorrow morning's breakfast show, before the papers talk about it. And this is one example. News came out on Twitter that Sir Chris Hoy, uh, during the Commonwealth Games, had taken a wee saunter over to the Sir Chris Hoy velodrome. And as he was about to in go into the Sir Chris Hoy velodrome, Sir Chris Hoy got stopped. Uh, by security and uh, I was saying this can't be true and there was a little bit of a tickle on this on Twitter now as it happens Sir Chris Hoy uh, is, is someone that I know and so I put a message to him and said is it true and so I got a direct message with him hey big fellow what a magnificent couple of days just to bar him up uh, please tell me is it true that you were stopped at security at your own velodrome and full credit to the guy he got back in touch. He says, yep, she saw my pass, but stopped me to make me turn it around so she could see I had the right access. Funny, but just doing her job. An all-round nice guy, Sir Chris Hoy. But that was a case of me getting that on before lunchtime. And then it was in the news uh, the following day. And uh, it was just a case for me of getting in there first and sharing it uh, with, our, with our listeners. And on the subject of the Commonwealth Games, uh, the closing ceremony. Did we all watch the closing ceremony? We all watched it. It had its, had its moments, didn't it? certainly did, and it had um, the speeches. 
and uh, they were a bit long. The speech is right in the middle, if you remember. Um, so I put this out. I was putting spe tweets out right the way throughout things that were happening. So because everybody in Scotland was watching the closing ceremony of the Commonwealth Games, and the speeches went on and on and on. So I put this during the speeches. I managed to nip out and make a cup of tea, a sandwich and wash the car, uh, which kind of summed up perhaps what everybody was feeling at that time, because that got a really good hit and a really good tickle. But it's a timing thing. If you're sitting there and it's just when everyone's hopefully thinking the same thing and you can get the tweet out or the Facebook message out as well to engage with them, it's key. Um, and at the very end, I said, right, thank you, Glasgow. That was bra. Now, everybody come through Edinburgh. Our party's just kicking off the Edinburgh Fringe which, of course, everybody in the east of Scotland absolutely loved. Um, so that got lots of tickles and lots of uh, shares and uh, retweets as well. Now, an internet craze. My advice on this one is if you are going to join in on it, um, be creative and try and do something slightly different. Now, the big one of late, of course, has been the Ice Bucket Challenge. Everybody's been getting nominated for it. Everybody's been doing it. And it was a couple of weeks before I'd been nominated myself. Now, I'd seen so many of them. You're in your back garden, you're in your deck chair, you've got your feet in a basin, and you go, oh, thanks very much for the nominee. Oh, I'll get you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like to nominate, oh, I'd like to nominate Davy, Barry, and Gary. Uh, oh, that's me wet, and run off. It's like, right, okay, I've seen it. I've seen it. Do something slightly different. So I thought, well, as I've been nominated, I'm going to try and do something that's different. And obviously, we've got to stick to the format of what it is. And don't get me wrong, this is, this is a magnificent thing. The money that was raised, the profile that was raised for these particular charities and causes uh, would not have been anywhere near the size they were had it not been for the engagement of people across the globe uh, on social media. So that was vitally important. But the fun, there's a fun aspect to it. It's based on fun. So have fun with it. And so I did something which basically meant I got out of my bed 15 minutes earlier than I normally do, went across the road to where I have, well there's a golf course, not where I have a golf course, that's just, that's just, uh, that's far too exuberant for a radio DJ's wages. And there's a, a golf course across the road, so I thought, well I'm going to use that, and, um, and this, is, this, was, this was my ice bucket challenge. Right, first of all I'd like to thank Scott Hastings and Andy Boogie Booglas for the nominations, never want to shirk a challenge. I'm here on hole number 13 at Craig Miller Park Golf Club in Edinburgh, and uh, oh, and I would oh, like to nominate <coughs> Andy Gray, my brother John, and Kenny Skip Houston in Selkirk to take the ice bucket challenge. It's for a good cause. So here we go, lads! Oh, oh, Jesus! Oh, oh, oh! Hurry up! I got out of my bed 50 minutes earlier, I put on a onesie and uh, we did that and then we got it out using social media over the radio and the, and the, over the course of the morning. Uh, stuck on the Facebook page, over 76,000 people were reached, loads of shares, likes, because it was again, it was hot at the time, it was big at the time and uh, that then led on to the, the local paper, the Evening News covered it as well, they did their own take on the Ice Bucket Challenge and I got a very attractive picture of myself uh, to accompany that. Uh, too. So the knock-on effect was obviously the Ice Bucket Challenge uh, was, was getting the profile raised, um, but what we did on the radio station and part of that was, uh, was also highlighted as well, which is great. So if it's topical, it's worth having fun with it. Uh, that's what I'd like to say. Uh, nothing more topical of late than the, uh, the referendum. I came into the studio on, uh, on, on the big day itself on Thursday, and uh, this was the front page of The Sun that greeted me. However, I don't know if you'd been in the studio beforehand, uh, or not, uh, but somebody had, shall we say, touched their own little bit of graffiti onto it. And, um, all right, let's have a look. I think it was Boogie in the morning who'd done it before me. Um, so that then got photographed and on Twitter and on Facebook, and everyone was talking about it. Everyone had their own take on it. So that was put around. 
Something big is happening locally. I'm trying to get all over that as quickly as I possibly can. I want to get in before anybody else does. I want to be one of the first ways that people are going to hear about something that's happening, certainly in our area for our audience, like a car rolling into the Union Canal, uh, which, which happened. And uh, I saw this uh, on, uh, on Twitter. And uh, shared it was Edinburgh's worst drivers, which is a brilliant Twitter feed. Uh, and uh, genuinely, somebody had it's like my traffic updates. Instead of saying, "If you're going along the Union Canal, please take care," because there's a car uh, rolled into it. Uh, there's the picture there, which kind of sets its own scene, and uh, everybody got right behind it. It was later on the evening news covered it, and it was in the on the TV as well. But it was great because I was delighted that I got in there first. And always, and as a rule. Um, if, if you do take it off someone, if you do spot it on, somewhere, on someone else's site, I always try and credit them because it's, uh, it's a bit cheeky if you, if you nick it. Uh, another one, uh, which I stopped, I stopped my car uh, and ran across the road to take a picture with my phone because I thought this was going to be a hit because they were all over it and I'm sure they've been across uh, through the West as well. But the, the pizza campaign, have you seen them? These poor kids who are standing out on roundabouts and street corners just going, any pizza, any size uh, for 6.99. And they're standing there for like six hours at a time, right? And this was about day three of this campaign in Edinburgh. So I ran out, took a wee picture of it, and says, these guys are all over town, and in the rain, it was chucking it down, uh, making a wee bit of extra cash for themselves. Give them a wee toot and a, and a wave if you pass them on, right? So we, again, I engaged people going, yeah, they were out by my bit as well. And I got loads of sort of, yeah, reaction from it too, which was great. The shares were there, over 10,500 people in the morning. So I'm trying to come up with ideas like this on a daily basis to engage uh, with my audience, with my listeners. And uh, this, is, this is the challenge. But when you see something like that saying, ah, I'm going to get a picture of that pizza box and uh, send it around. Now, having some sort of profile sometimes means you'll attract a bit of negative uh, reaction from people on Twitter and Facebook. And here's just... This is how I like to deal with it, yeah, because you know, you get it, you know, not, you're not everyone's going to like your cheeky chat or your banter. Uh, and here's, here's a wee example, and for those of you who have a sensitive disposition, I have censored uh, the, the naughty words. But there you are. <laughs> now, I don't know what Joshy, or what I've done to upset Joshy, but for some reason, Joshy wasn't liking my chat or my banter. So there you are, uh, you, you're a f and your top 10 at 10 makes me want to kill myself. A wee bit extreme, Joshy. It's just some tunes, mate, you know. Let's not go too far. I turn the radio off at 10 because you... Now, I don't know if that was a full stop, deliberate, or if he had his own idea of exactly what I got up to at 10 o'clock on the radio. I'm not sure. Um, so now, <laughs> there are many ways that you can deal with these individuals. Uh, on Twitter. You can engage with them and in inevitably, you know, they're just going to open up some more wild and salacious abuse in your direction. Or you can just engage with them but with a wee bit of humour. And this was my reply to Joshy. Nice tweet, but should you not be in school at 10 o'clock? <laughs> and then I blocked him. So I had this idea of going, ah, ah. And he couldn't reply to me. So there you are, Joshy, get it right up you. Um, so, uh, and again, a great tool, engaging with your audience, engaging with your customer, uh, is personalised things. This is a great thing about what I do. I try and personalise and make it my, my own point of view at all times of the day. I talk about myself, I talk about my kids, I talk about things that go wrong at home, uh, I talk about things that go wrong in my life, and, uh, and I use my, my, my pet dog, right, Charlie... T-Dog Esquire uh, gets a wee bit of loving on Twitter. Folk love pets on Facebook uh, and Twitter. And yeah, it can be, oh, look, there's my dog. Yes, we know you've got a dog and it's lovely. But only show me something when it's entertaining, not just like scratching itself or something like that. So um, this is an example of me using my own personal life to engage with it with the listeners at home. Um, I put this on Facebook. Sam, it's my son, is uh, at home on study leave. He says he's been unable to study much today due to being constantly distracted. I questioned his excuse. He sent me this, right? Now he sent me a video of Charlie the dog basically just going, go and give a wee scratch. <laughs> go and, and give a wee scratch, big fella. He doesn't actually talk, my dog, I should just stress that point. <laughs> it's just me interpret interpreting uh, dogs. Would you like to see the video? Would you like to see what I'm talking about? This is, this is, what, this is what actually uh, took place. This is what this is the video was. Yeah. There's Charlie. Right, come here. 
Ah, that's good. Quite like that. That's nice. Thank you. Ah, that's good. Ah, there we are. Right. Cheers. Oh, no finish yet, pal. No finish. No, no. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. That's quite good. So you just scratch that away there. That's good. Uh, no, no, no finish yet. No, no, no. Carry on. No, no, no. Ah, there we are. That's good. I'm not bothered what you're trying to do. I don't care that you've got a higher ex English exam to pass. I'm just wanting to... There we are. That's an ass scratch. I'm not finished yet. So I put that on. And uh, as, as you can see from, uh, you know, over 700 likes, 40 odd shares, 17 and a half thousand people reached uh, over the course of the morning when, uh, when we put that on this channel again. Um, and this is a great one. If you see something funny, take a photo of it. We saw that earlier on with the pizza box person uh, and share it. Uh, and and, and I'm, as I'm in Kilmarnock, I'm going to show you something of my last trip to, to Kilmarnock. Last October I was here uh, doing a play uh, called Kiss Me Honey Honey. Anyone come and see it? No. Um, <laughs> and, thanks. And uh, in the dressing rooms of the theatre, Kilmarnock, there was a sign. Right, and I love these. We love. We see signs everywhere. Right, some of them are just brilliantly funny. And uh, this one really made me laugh. Uh, it's genuinely on the shower door. Do not use tap shoes in the shower. Anyone found doing so will be asked to leave. Who tap dances in the shower before a show? And are they dressed or are they naked? Breaking the shoes in, going. Chick, 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 chick. I've told you before. Get out. Sorry. Chick, I just couldn't get it, and it's been there for ages, it's all wilting and torn. Uh, so that was one. Uh, one, I was in a, a club in uh, Govan, uh, up in Glasgow. Uh, and we'll check the spelling. Any two people or couple <laughs> found in any toilet cubicle together will immediately be asked to leave the club. What if it's very busy and the two guys are just going in for a quick... I don't know, uh, but it was there. It had been, it had been uh, what's, what's the phrase used when you put it through the, it's been what? L laminated, that's the big word that I couldn't get hold of. So laminated as well, up on the wall, brilliant. Um, and retweet other folk stuff, uh, which I'm a great fan of. Just send it out there, because if it makes you laugh, hopefully it's going to make your, your audience laugh as well. This, from Stuart. This chirpy letter to the Scotsman has made my morning on December the 18th. On visiting my local supermarket, we were treated to a carol concert by pupils of a local school. They were rubbish. Fortunately, I still have a week to foster some Christmas spirit. Neil Sinclair from Edinburgh. The Scotsman printed that. The Scotsman, there must be somebody working behind the scenes at the Scotsman with a wicked sense of humour. So retweet it. Again, it'll get you a couple of retweets and people will engage with you and you get the, the, the sense of humour that you share, hopefully with your audience as well. Uh, and finally, the big one, the virals. And we've had a fantastic... Uh, display and an explanation of how you can work a viral to its absolute global potential. The one I'm going to highlight for you is the one where I stumbled onto it. And the majority of virals are accidental. You don't, it's very difficult, unless you have the power of, of a brand like Iron Brew where you can sit and very meticulously work out how you're going to do it. Uh, some of the best ones that work in social media are completely accidental, and mine was. Um, Every year at the Usher Hall in Edinburgh, we have the Radio Forth Awards, which is your, your typical celebration of people in the community. They get awards, and we have some pop bands on, and it's a great gig, and every, everybody's happy. I host it. And uh, I always try to do something different every year to, you know, to reflect on the year that we had or something that was going on. And uh, being a, a big Edinburgh radio station, we often would get accused by our listeners in Fife that we're a little bit Edinburgh-centric. So I wanted to do a little tribute to the people of Fife, just to tell them how much we actually do love them. Do we have any Fifers in here today? Any Fifers? No? Good. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I love Fife, and this has actually uh, endeared me to the people of Fife. Um, so I was trying to come up with a song. Our strapline is Edinburgh, the Lothians, and Fife, which is our, our, our broadcast area for Fourth One. And I was trying to incorporate that into a song, and I, I couldn't get it to scan, and I was thinking, well, I'll do a parody song using Edinburgh, the Lothians, and Fife, and I couldn't get it to work. And I phoned up my mate the next day and says, oh, I was up to half past two in the morning trying to work this parody out. And the guy, he says, what are you trying to do? Explain to him. And he goes, just get Frank Sinatra and do That's Fife instead of That's Life. <laughs> and just as lights just bimmed above my head, I went, well, my magnificent idea. I went home and brought up on Google Maps the kingdom of Fife. I had the words to Frank Sinatra's That's Life by the side. And I just very slowly replaced the words of That's Life and created 
that's Fife. And my heart of hearts, I only thought it was going to be a filler for the Radio 4th Awards. We would do it at the awards between a couple of bands, and I would have it in my back pocket if I was ever doing a gig in Fife or something like that. It went bananas. We got it onto YouTube on the next day, and this was in the middle of November, and by Christmas we were over 100,000 hits, and it's somewhere in the region of about 174,000, uh, let me just check, 173,079. Uh, not that I'm keeping count or anything like that. Um, it's been sung at New Year uh, in certain places in Fife. I have been approached by a gentleman who asked me for permission to play it at the funeral of his mother. Um, because she was a good fifer, and she always said Yahoo, and uh, she liked the song. So could could we play it at the funeral? And I was like, well, absolutely. Um, it's a karaoke song. People have been in bars in Spain and karaoke, and that's Fife has come up on the big screen. Someone's taking the time to, to type all the anyway. So it's gone absolutely nuts, and it's something that I've. I'm very proud of, and uh, it, it was a complete and utter accident, but it just continues to follow me um, around wherever I go. Now, uh, the plan was I was going to finish on it, uh, but having heard <laughs> Ernesto Dorma uh, early on, I thought, nah, I'm not going to bother singing uh, live uh, here. But I thought, well, what we'll do is we'll just show the video uh, instead, in case you haven't seen it. And if you've got friends in Fife, send this across to them. Um, but this is what it was. It was a little bit of fun. Uh, and a tribute to the kingdom of Fife and just one great example of how um, interacting with your audience, your local listeners, viewers, followers uh, can, uh, can strike a chord. Eight years I've been doing this and I've never vocalised on stage. Tonight at the Usher Hall, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to change that with my tribute to the kingdom. That's Fife! That's where lots of people stay. Some people work in Edinburgh, the boat house in Dalgetty Bay. But I know if I want to go to Octortool, I turn off the M90, join the A92. I said that's five. And as funny as it may seem, They've got two wee places on the coast called Pit and Ween. One time I took the ferry to Zeebrugge town. Yeah, I did. But can't do that no more, cause they closed it down. I've been to Dunfermline, Glenrothes, Crossgates, Buckhaven, Cowan and Beef 2, Octor Mukti, Kirkconny, Kinghorn, Loch Gelly. Even I'm a doer. Each time I find myself staring methyl in the face, I pick myself up and get the f out of that place. That's five. I tell you, I can't deny it. I saw a caravan in Lower Largo. Man, I'm going to buy it. And if you're hungry, and you don't think it's going too far. Let's go to Anne Struthers award-winning fish and chip bar. I've been to Dunfermline, Glenrothes, Crossgates, Buckhaven, Cowan and Beef 2, Octor Murty, Kirkcaldy, Kinghorn, Longelly, even Aberdour. Each time I find myself staring Methyl in the face. I pick myself up and get the f out of the place. That's five. And I can't deny it. I've heard so much about Jackie O's, but I've never tried it. I love the kingdom from the Lingri to Rosai. Because I broadcast across That's the brand Edinburgh The Lothians And Fire That's Fire So I got it in Edinburgh, The Lothians and Fife Our audience connected with it 
and um, as I say, it's been great. Um, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope you were really impressed with my PowerPoint skills. Uh, I'm going to work on them. Uh, and uh, No, I think I'm doing quite well as you are. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I'll hand you back to Gary. Thanks for your time. Thank you.